Alright, hey guys. Uh, welcome to my playthrough of an indie game called Limbo. Now, Limbo is made by a Danish developer called Playdead. Um, it's a very interesting game in that it is uh, largely a silent game. Now, because it's a, a, a silent game, I, by that I mean there's no dialogue, there's no words, um, anything like that, right? It's all... It tells its story entirely through visuals, uh, through your actions, what you do and what you see, without actually ever saying anything. And it's a very, very interesting game in that re respect. Uh, it's also very notable for the fact that it has a very abstract uh, story. It's, uh, there's lots of theories about what the story actually is. And Playdead, to their credit, has been actually very, very vague and very hands-off uh, because they feel that the the power of the story comes from you coming to your own conclusions about it. So I have some of my own theories, um, and I'm not going to tell you what the theories are until the end uh, or as as we go through it. Um, now, because this is a silent game, I'm actually going to be experimenting a little bit and I'm going to have more of a perpetual voiceover uh, than I have in my other games because that's something some of you have asked for and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a shot with this game and this game is a really good fit for that because there's no dialogue, there's no words, it's all visual and like ambient sounds and music and things like that. Um, so this is I, normally I play games very very silently. I'm, I like I think to myself maybe I'll I'll mutter a swear word or something like that to myself if I get frustrated. But for the most part I don't talk when I'm playing games. So I'm going to have to be perpetually reminding myself to actually make a comment or something like that uh, as I'm playing. Um, so without any further ado, let's venture into the world of limbo. I love the aesthetic that they have going on here. It's very, very grainy, black and white kind of aesthetic. We find ourselves in a forest. And at first, it can be a bit confusing, because well, what do I do? What's going on? Where, where, where am I? So until you press a button, and you start waking up. Now this game has a very simple control scheme. There's movement. I can move forward, I can move backward, I can jump, uh, I can't crouch, so I can move in three directions, um, and there's an action button, which right now doesn't do anything. Now, any gamer worth their salt knows that if the game wants you to go to the right, the first thing you do is you go to the left, because there's usually some kind of secret. Now, there's these little glowing things in the game which I honestly don't know what they are. I don't know what they represent, I don't know what they do, but they're this game's collectible. And uh, you'll find them in secret places around the entire game. Now, first thing I'm gonna point out is look at this game and look at how much of a nature aesthetic there is. Like here we are on a, on a fallen log. There's another bigger log in the background that you can see there. Um, now, most games encourage you to not fall off of a cliff, but here, we're going to try going, because it's the only way we can go. Slide. Now, this game is a very interesting game in that uh, it is a very dark game. As you may have guessed from the aesthetic and the fact that it's called Limbo. This game is not intended to be played through successfully in a single try. You are expected to die. You are expected to die a lot. It is a game intended to be played through trial and error. Um, and we've got a great example coming up here. We have our first hazard. As somebody who's never played the game, you're, okay, going forward this way, yada, da, 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 and then, oh god. <laughs> Here's a spike pit. Completely not what you would expect uh, from what we've seen so far. However, 
it sets the tone for this game and the rest of the game. I've only played this game like a couple times before, so some of these things I'm going to be able to expect, others I'm not. Um, some of these I'm going to deliberately die just so you can see that there is a risk there. Anyway, we've climbed up onto this platform. There's a rope, which we can hang on to. Let's go down, 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 and see what we find. Yeah. So some of the time I, sometimes I'm going to die by accident, just because I've only played this game a couple times. Other times I'm going to die on purpose, just to show you what it's like. Um, so here we are on a little platform hanging from a rope, and we can't really see what's below us except on the left. If we walk over to the right, it tends to teeter, but again, we can't see. So let's go to where we can see. There's another pit. Now, because we fell into the spike pit before, we know it, we have to jump across. But I don't see any spikes down there, so let's explore. Ah, water. <laughs> We cannot swim, <laughs> as you might have figured out by the fact that I just died. So, fortunately, like like I said, this game is designed to be played through trial and error. Um, as a result, you have unlimited lives. There's no penalty, per se, for dying. Just it takes you back a little bit and forces you to try again. Uh, deep dark caves. Those are always fun. Oh, it's a boat. What's here? That's... Interesting. I guess we're not going back. As we've already shown, we can't swim. Listen to how quiet it is. Aside from my jabbering, of course. Here we are on the other side of the water. And here's a wall we can't climb. Now, take a moment to appreciate the aesthetic, the uh, the sense of isolation and loneliness that they've got here. There's nobody around. We, we, we haven't seen anybody else. Um, there's been no other, like, so far this world seems incredibly empty. And that's one of the great things about this, is it's just this incredible sense of isolation and loneliness. And look at this I mean even though it's very stark and black and white look at the aesthetic they've got here it is oddly beautiful yet highly creepy ah here's an interesting one doesn't the ground right in front of me look interesting kind of spiky so let's see what happens if I try to walk over it I die <laughs> These bear traps. Uh, I can't jump over it. I, I obviously, there's two of them looks like side by side, so I can't jump that far. So if I use the action key, I can hold it apart, and that way I can just jump over one and jump over another. Oh! Almost jump over the second one. I uh, need to not do it as like one continuous thing, gonna break it up into a couple bits here. Over one, there we go. Get the running jump over the other one. You do jump further if you get a running start. In this game. Oh, that looks pleasant. I don't know what that is.
So that, whatever that thing is, we, it's, this game is kind of puzzle based. So we see that, uh, that thing actually weighs the rope down. So if I take the bear trap and put it underneath, you can use the bear trap to remove the weight on the rope, which allows you to go higher. That's the kind of problem solving that this game asks for. It really is kind of a thinking game. Hmm. Couple pebbles coming down. Oh shoot! 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 shoot. Get out of the way! <laughs> you see what I mean? Designed to be played through trial and error. This is one of those games where you die a lot. Okay, so here we are in some water. We've got a crate, some flies, which probably means there's dead things in the water. I can't jump over that water, that's too far. But I did see a dangling vine back here. Probably use the crate to get to the vine. Uh, I'll try to climb up. Uh, nope, can't climb up onto that branch. That branch is too far away. Oh, oh hey, I can swing. Forgot about that. I forgot that that was a thing you could do in this game. Oh, sounds like we pushed that log in the hole. Now here's another example of just how tricky it was. I mean, I almost didn't see that vine, but I did see it, and that allows me to get this other little glowing thing here. Again, don't really know what these are. They are the game's collectible. you look at that, there's a bear trap up in that tree. That means one of two things. Either we're going to come back to it later, or it's going to fall on me and kill me. Let's try... I can't see anything else to do. Oh, it didn't fall on me, so there's that. Butterfly. Oh, crap. Ah, that doesn't look ple pleasant. <laughs> uh, you got this kind of low thrumming sound in the game now. Here's what happens if you, if you just stand there. Yep. You gun died it. Go figure that the first living thing you see in this world wants to kill you. There's a kind of a metallic sound that I've stopped. What does that mean? Just me, does that bear trap look like it's leaning a bit more over the edge of the branch? It is kind of stomping. That sounds interesting. Hey, knock the bear trap down. 
I don't want to be on this side of the bear trap. Let's bet we can use the spare trap against that uh, that leggy thing. Looks like a, some kind of spider. Yeah, point at me. Oh yeah, you didn't like that. You didn't like that at all. <laughs> Aren't we just pleasant people? <laughs> just doesn't learn. Oh, that third leg kind of came in quickly. Yep, definitely some kind of spider thing. But it's got a wing. That low thrumming sound has also got a wing. Probably means we're safe for it for now. So let's go into the deep dark cave. <laughs> yeah, that seems like a good idea. Especially in this world. <laughs> well, I think I found Spider Bro's home. Don't know why I'm calling it Spider Bro. All this webbing and everything. Oh. Look at that, I'm stuck. Jump can't move in. Oh crap. Oh, did I make a mistake? It hasn't, it hasn't faded to black uh, and, re and taken me back. Uh, so I'm assuming I'm not dead just yet. Oh, yeah, I can still move. Just cocoon me. Uh, it looks like I have to struggle against this. I think I see some of the strands breaking. I don't know. I guess you can just call me Cocoon Boy. This is going to be interesting if I have to play the rest of the game like this. So far it seems pleasant. Okay, can I still jump? I can still jump. Perfect. I can't jump as far though, so that I imagine it would have been difficult if I hadn't stopped and lined it up. <laughs> Again, I've hit at the bottom of a ramp. This game is just all kinds of fun. Get out of the way! This is not a game for relaxation, as I'm sure you gather. <laughs> oh, this looks fun. I get the feeling I don't want to be in front of this little ball thing. And I see a bunch of spikes down there as well, so this probably isn't all that pleasant. Oh, shit. Stay away from me, spiders. Stay away from me, spider, but I can't go anywhere else. No, don't, don't catch up to me. I don't want you to do that. That's not fun for me. Oh. <laughs> ah, this is not a game that rewards hesitation at all. Oh look, I still got a little bit of a cocoon stuck to the back of my head. I wonder if that's intentional or if that's glitch. It's, uh, it's another someone else. Doesn't look too energetic. Oh, crap. 
Okay, so it was a mannequin, or a dummy, or some sort, and uh, the fact that it's hanging by its neck is probably not a good sign. But I'm not in the cocoon anymore. Ah, crap. To never trust anything. I was gonna say we seem to be seeing some kind of field, but it looks like we've gone into some sort of forest like. How would you look at that? Just below the platform I'm on, just in front of it, there seems to be a body impaled on a tree. Pleasant! Looks safe. Yep. Perfectly safe. And that tree just fell just below a giant spiky protruding thing on the branch I'm currently on. What's betting it would have impaled me if I'd stayed on that branch? Sounds friendly. Again, spikes at the bottom of a ramp. You just, you don't trust anything in this game. saying before how natural the aesthetic was, the trees and grass and everything, I don't, I'm not seeing that as much anymore, are you? It's amazing how something as subtle as that can create an entirely different atmosphere. That doesn't sound friendly. Oh look, that wheel was on fire. Nope, not friendly at all. Where are you going? Come back here, why are you trying to kill me? this game, that'll kill me, because, let's face it, in this game, everything's gonna kill me. Look, another... that, that, that doesn't look like a mannequin, that, that looks like a... that looks like a me, hanging by its neck. Again, look, it's friendly. Where are you going? I don't really like you. There's another one of you, isn't it? Ah, uh, that doesn't work. Alright, got it. You two run away. What if I turn back? Ah, don't go bad! Uh. <laughs> yeah, you see what I mean? Trial and error. Learn by doing. Fun. 
I definitely couldn't jump across that pit because you may have noticed. Hey, don't take uh, why did you take the rope away? I was only coming to coming after you, really. <laughs> yeah, because you may have noticed like if I tried to jump across that pit, one of those bear traps landed like right at the edge, so if I tried to jump across I would have died it. Died it, yeah, that's right, you heard me. Died it. No, 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 you stay away from me. What's betting the water's not going to slow you down? Nope, it doesn't slow you down at all. I can't jump. Oh, is this a teeter totter puzzle? It is. Thank you for your. Oh, crap. Well, we seem to be back in a more natural environment. Um, we seem to have no imminent threat to our lives at this point in time, so why don't we call that episode one? <laughs> ah, yeah, I haven't had to go back and uh, try anything so many times that I have to cut it out. So, yeah, let's call episode one there, alright? Hope you join me next time, alright?